Greetings Petroheads, my name is the Tom, you're on my gaming channel and it's time for another episode of Automation, the car company tycoon game. I'm sorry if I sound a little bit tired, that's because I am. <laughs> Can't really do much about that. But yeah, so today I'm going to review another car sent in by Mateus de Oliveira. Um, I hope I, I pronounced that correctly on Facebook. And you know what? Um... Before we get into this review, I want to address something real quick. Um, I said in one of my previous automation episodes that I would, you know, have a schedule of what I do in on, uh, in which automation episode um, every week. Like uh, Monday and Tuesday replicas, Friday this and that, uh, Saturday that, and I'm just gonna, I just decided that this was not gonna be the way I would handle this in the future. Because, well, I don't want to have to, you know, force myself to um, to build a replica at one specific day where I don't feel like doing it. And therefore I much more prefer doing the stuff that I actually feel like doing at the day that I'm recording it. And so here we are with a 1993 sports coupe, which doesn't really have a particular name. But that's alright. It is a, a monocoque made from AHS steel. It is longitudinal with double wishbones front and multi-link rear end. A ton of quality. Aluminium panels. Well, that's gonna give this guy a lot of stiffness. And we do see that he's got really wide wheel arches. Or actually, this is the, the, the larger variant of the body, so... I don't think it's actually that wide. For the wheel arches to be yeah he could he could make them much wider um aesthetically this really looks like a 90s japanese coupe like nissan skyline comes to mind with the grill between the big headlights um the scoop the pretty simplistic bumper with big vents and the grill down there it, it looks really japanese and especially with something like this right here and the, the simplistic taillights and one exhaust right there that's, um, that's an interesting exhaust placement but it's still fine not gonna be the judge on that one it is rear wheel drive and let's actually take a look at the engine here it is a three and a half liter naturally aspirated in 6 with dual overhead cams made only from aluminium only the finest aluminium of course uh, four valves per cylinder, if I didn't say that before. Uh, 92.5 bore and 86.8 stroke, so pretty, pretty over square. Um, or is that under square? Yeah, or well, I I always get those uh, confused. But uh, but uh, but I mean the one w that um, says that the bore is quite significantly higher than the stroke. Meaning, meaning that we can rev this engine out pretty nicely, but it's still reducing reliability. Oh, that's because we got only forged H-beam conrods. You might have considered going for I-beam steel as they allow for higher RPMs. And we got reliability issues in spite of the fact that we got plus 15 quality in here. So do keep that in mind. This is this is uh, sh shipping up to be a very expensive car. Yeah, and plus 15 quality again. Um, the torque curve is quite nice. Um, let uh, We're gonna see the, the, the top end of this power curve a little bit later once we test run it. Compression ratio of 9.0 9 to 1. You still get so much fuel octane left in there. You can increase this so much still. Also, you got you got it set to you got it running on 91 octane fuel. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, look at that. We we just we just increased the horsepower by 14 horsepower, I think, and torque by 23 newton meters just by clicking in here twice. Well. I'm just saying. 
It is naturally aspirated as we've seen. It does have multiple injection, no direct injection, and that's that's totally realistic because direct injection in 1993. Wait a minute, th this is 2015. This is this is tw so it's made in 2015, but made to look like uh, 1993 and with parts that were available in 1993. So it's kind of an interesting approach. The final results will still be better than if it were actually built in 1993 because you know the quality of each individual part will improve over time so the parts we have today are generally better than they used to have 20 years ago which is only natural i think anyway the fuel mixture is 14.1 to 1 so pretty lean the ignition timing is very not retarded but retarded devs you you said you'd fix that like i i can remember you saying that at least one year ago and <laughs> it's still here but i mean it's such a minor i'm nitpicking but uh basically it's it's such a minor thing but it would still be nice if it were corrected 8000 rpm limit uh race tubular exhaust headers with pretty large diameter and also a freeway cat one reverse flow and one barefoot muffler and again plus 15 quality like that's yeah the production units are a thousand and thirty four point six so if you if you if you're the ceo of a company and you pay your your engineers like say 15 dollars an hour then this engine one of these engines would cost you about 15 to 16 thousand uh, 15 thousand and something uh, only for the production units plus the material cost of 1500 which is, which is not that bad but still one single engine and it's it's making 316 horsepower so it's n not really blowing the doors off and especially considering you could still refine it quite a lot by just doing this like I'm not sure if 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 that's if this final result is worth the production units. But let's go to the trim. We got a six-speed manual gearbox. Interesting choice in 1993, supposedly. Um, second gear tops out at 100 kilometers an hour. Top it is geared to 290 kilometers an hour, so that's that's quite good but we still have a little bit more space here you can still make the gearing a little bit longer like so we did not really suffer that much in acceleration time only 0.1 seconds which we can get back like this but it's fine again if, if he wants if he wants to have it that way it's gonna be that way gear LSD plus 15 quality again like is, is this supposed to be a super expensive, super expensive exotic supercar or, or what? I, I don't get why you why I put so much quality into everything. Sports compound road tires, 17 inch rims. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of tire profile left in these in these sets of rubber. Um, we got slightly oversteering handling. Not too bad though. And alloy wheels. And everybody likes a little bit of oversteer, right? Uh, yeah, I, again, we... We could still optimize some things here in the brake tab as well. Um, I don't know... I don't know why you chose bigger brakes in the rear like than, than in the front um, because you got more weight over the front axle than you do over the rear axle even if you do make downforce just because of the um, weight transfer is, is, is the word I was looking for while you're braking um, yeah so 
definitely you could optimize that as well. Semi-clad under tray, minus seven quality. I don't get it. You put so much yeah, and insufficient cooling. You put so much quality into everything else. And then what actually makes a car fast on the top end, you put minus seven quality. And this this will obviously also make fuel economy worse, but not by that much. Yeah, 23.8 if it were zero. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I, I don't fully understand your reasoning there. Also, we get five seats, but minus nine quality on on the interior, minus two on the driver assists, and minus 15 on the safety. Probably to save weight more than anything else, if I had to guess. Active sport springs, semi-active dampers, passive sway bars, and what looks to be a, sp a sport or a race preset. Probably more of a sport uh, preset though. And the final result is a car with almost 50 drivability, despite rear wheel drive. 67.8 um, sportiness, which is good. 38.7 comfort with minus 9 quality on, on a sport interior that doesn't have much comfort to begin with. That's, that's quite a, an interesting number there. Um, prestige 33.9 uh, excuse me and safety 57.4 again like how with minus 15 quality. But, you know, as long as it's safe, it, it should be fine. Uh, how do I feel about this car? I think for a sports car, for, an, for a 1993 sports car, this is expensive. Like, a production cost of $60,666 is probably gonna put it into a price uh, category in, 90, in 1993 similar to say a Jaguar XJ220 which as we all know is significantly faster though and you know more aerodynamic lighter I, I am not sure if it handles better because the, the XJ220 doesn't really have that good of a reputation when it comes to handling but still what does this one do around the effort track? One twenty six point six four. So 126.64 is not really that impressive for a car that costs this much and is supposed to be a sports car. Um, well, I'm I, I'm just not sure how I how I feel about this car because you can have all these numbers, the horsepower. The drivability, the sportiness will be a little bit, uh, a little bit tricky to achieve without a lot of quality or just a much bigger engine. But you can have this performance, this economy, or better than that, and pretty much all this car is for much, much, much less money. I don't know why he had to put all the quality in the world into the engine. Um. It's not a bad thing to have a high quality engine, but if the end result um, is just ridiculously expensive and quote unquote only makes 360 in horsepower, then I don't know if that's actually worth it. Plus, as we've seen, the, the engine has still got uh, a lot of room for, for improvement. You can 
put this back up here we if if we just go for this one the ibm steel conrad then our reliability issues are completely gone if we then also increase the compression to 10.8 we are using our fuel octane to the best possible extent or at least as, as well as we can with a regular uh, unleaded fuel G giving us extra horsepower and torque and we might even be able to rev it out a little bit higher what is um that's the intake yeah with a throttle per cylinder like let's see what this costs this has exactly the same production unit and about the same material cost and yet we get like 36 horsepower more more torque and a, and a nicer torque curve and see what i mean if, if that's what what he would have done i would have at least somewhat been able to understand what what he's what what he's trying to do with this engine but the way it is like it's it's not reliable it it's not efficient it's not particularly powerful or at least it could be much more powerful as we've seen and yeah i overall i can't really think that this would this would be a, a true competitor to 90s Japanese sports cars not only because it's a way out of the price range of those cars but also because you can have you can have just as much for way less money and because this this car is not really reliable because it it has insufficient cooling co insufficient cooling airflow I should say and the engine isn't really reliable to begin with so and obviously as a contrast to that the Japanese sports car of the era were usually very reliable like it's pretty hard to kill say a Skyline engine or it's pretty hard to kill a Honda CRX engine or a Honda Integra engine and this one well not so much <laughs> yeah, so overall let's let's look at the detail stats for a second uh, we do have a little bit of drivability penalty as far as the gearbox goes then for the tires for the wheel spin even with the geared LSD and plus 15 quality in it and even with the sports tires with plus 10 quality we still have a good amount of wheel spin and the sportiness is basically only only hurt by what engine drive while well, driver assists we do have some we do have launch control in here in the 90s sports coupe with a manual transmission you gotta you gotta you gotta explain that to me <laughs> um and other than that let's see your prestige here oh the interior quality is negatively affecting this as one might expect and the drivetrain is minus five percent prestige i don't know why but it is so the cabin noise is obviously gonna be real in this car because a sports interior is not really um the quietest interior to begin with and then we have minus nine quality in there so there's a lot of sound deafening gone presumably and the brake pad type is not said to be very comfortable as we've seen it's more on the racy side of things torque curve is not really that bad for for comfort but it could be better gearbox yeah sure the only one that really gives you a boost in comfort is an automatic one and this really doesn't fit in it into this car 
So overall, basically it's not worth the money uh, and it could be more refined, is my honest opinion on this. So yeah, I mean, I mean, it looks, it looks the part at least. You gotta, you gotta admit that it looks like a 90s Japanese sports car, but it doesn't, it doesn't behave like one, it, unfortunately. So back to the drawing boards, I, I guess. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button, helps out a great deal. Subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.